Well, I told you this one would be even worse than the last one, and you still showed up. Well done, you. This, again, is a heat lost equals heat gained, but more complicated this time. We have a little piece of iron which is hot, and we're dropping it into a cup of water which is cold. And so the hot iron's going to cool down, and the cold water's going to warm up, and we're going to end up at some in-between temperature. And their question is, what's the final temperature? So very similar procedure to 1.6.2, but the math is going to be even more disgusting. So if we break this down like we normally do with heat lost equals heat gained, on one side we have the hot chunk of iron cooling down, and on the other side we have the cold water, which warms up because we dropped a hot piece of iron into it. Cold water warming. Again, these are both temperature changes, so they're both going to be MC delta T. Delta T for the hot iron and MC delta T for the cold water. What do we know? The mass of the iron is 5 grams. The specific heat for iron is in the data book on page 3. It's 0 0.449 joules per gram degree Celsius. I, that's what I thought, but I didn't trust myself and checked it, so now I can't prove that I knew it. And the temperature change Again, we have this problem like in the previous one where the iron starts out at 75 degrees and it's going to cool down to some in-between temperature. You can call it T or T final or whatever you like. And the water is starting at a cool 15 degrees and it's going to warm up to T. I'll just use T this time instead of TF. It's a little bit more sleek. So when we write our temperature change, Remember, we want this to come out positive so we don't get positive number equals negative number. That would be nuts. So we're going to say 75 minus T, with the high temp minus the low temp, to make sure it comes out positive. That's the energy that comes out of the hot piece of iron. On the other side, the mass of the water is 150 grams. Water's specific heat is well known to us, and the temperature change now is going to be T minus 15. And main rule of this entire section, heat lost equals heat gained. These two sides have to be the same, because the energy that comes out of the iron is the exact same heat that went into the cold water. So how do we solve this? Well, here we have 5 times 0 0.449, and we can do that. 5 times 0.449 is 2.245. It's still multiplied by 75 minus T. And this 2.245, when a number is right outside brackets like this, it distributes through some through them. So this is going to multiply the 75 and also the minus t. 2.245 times 75 is 168.375 minus, and then we have 2.245 times negative t is just minus 2.245 t. So there's our left side. Not too nice, but we'll be okay. We still have our equals, and on the right, very similar stuff happens. We can do 150 times 4.19, 628.5, times t minus 15. I'm just double checking that number. That I didn't expect it to come out only one decimal place. Yep, we're okay. And now 628.5 distributes through these brackets, so it's going to hit the T and the negative 15. 628 times T is easy enough. You just get 628T. 
and 628.5 times 15 is 9427.5, negative of course. 9427.5 Makes you miss the questions where they gave us nice numbers. This is what real life chem can look like where all, everything's kind of messy and there's a lot of decimal places. It's not really harder, it's just kind of a chore to write it all out. So you remember how we wanted to do this? We want to get all of our t's to one side and all of our numbers to the other. I can get rid of this negative t. I'll normally go after the negative ones because negatives are just a tiny bit annoying. We can add that amount onto each side of our equation. Or you can think of this as take the negative 2t to the right and it becomes a positive 2t. That totally works. Either way, you'll end up with 168.375 equals 628.5 plus 2.245. 630.745t. And then we have our minus 9427 here. Okay, all our t's are on the right now. Great. If we want our t's alone, we need to get rid of this minus 9400, so add that to both sides. Plus 9427.5 plus 9,427.5. These cancel. And we get plus 1,68.375. equals 630.745. If I want t alone now, I have to get rid of the 630, so divide both sides by 630.745, and we get the final temperature is 15.21 degrees. So we dropped a hot piece of iron into 15 degree water. The water warmed up to 15.2 degrees. Remember when they said water has a really high specific heat? This is what that looks like in real life. You put, you drop a hot thing into a bucket of water or a cup of water even, the temperature barely moves. Why is that? Because water's specific heat is 4.19 and iron's is almost a tenth that much. That means water really wins fights like this. The water says, nope, you're cooling down a lot, almost 60 degrees, and I'm hardly going to move at all. That's what having a high specific heat feels like. You don't change, everybody else changes around you. The other thing I should mention, water had kind of an unfair advantage because look how much more water there was. This was five grams of iron up against 150 grams of water. So this isn't just about the specific heat. It's a combination of higher specific heat and more mass. So overall, the water warmed up a little bit, 15 up to 15.2. The iron dropped from 75 down to 15.2, much bigger change. This is about as nasty as we can make a heat loss equals heat gain problem. So if you're good with this, and if you can do the ones with burning fuel, heating up some water, you should be in pretty good shape.